In this tutorial, I'll be 3D modeling these Burger King fries. The main focus of this tutorial is how to make this glitter material. The primary tools we'll be using are Adobe Illustrator and Blender 3.0. If you want to learn how to make this, just keep watching. The first step is to model the fries. I went ahead and copy and pasted a picture of the fries from Google and I went back and forth with my pen tool and my curvature tool and traced over the shapes that I saw. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to do this workflow of tracing these items and bring them over to Blender, you can go ahead and watch my Nokia Y2K tutorial to get a more in-depth um, explanation. Once I traced everything in the image, I went ahead and exported this by going to File Export As and make sure it's an SVG so you're able to edit it in Blender. Once on Blender, we're going to go ahead and import it by going to File Import SVG. It's usually very small, so you're just going to highlight everything and press S on your keyboard to scale it up and RX90 on your keyboard to rotate its axis 90 degrees. As you can see here, everything's pretty much imported as separate objects. I now want to add dimension to this by adding extrusion by going to the object data properties um, panel and under geometry, you're going to hit extrude. Um, I went with an extrusion of my liking, but feel free to adjust this as you see fit. I went ahead and extruded every single object that I imported into Blender from Adobe. I also joined together the objects like the individual letters that I knew were going to have the same color. So like the Burger King is all red. So I went ahead and joined that by pressing Control J on my keyboard or right click your mouse and click on join. And I added a plane by going to add mesh plane at the top left corner. The next step is to sculpt these objects. And first you have to convert the object to a mesh by right clicking your mouse and converting it to mesh. And then in the modifier properties panel, you have to remesh the object. For this case, I used the smooth option and I repeated this process to every single object I imported into Blender. I also wanted to look at the reference image. So I added it by going to add image reference and I imported the image from Google. I'm now ready to sculpt. So I go ahead and switch from object mode to sculpt mode and I try to sculpt it according to the reference image. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect. I wasn't really going for like a photorealistic look. So I went ahead and used the smooth tool, the inflate tool, the bulb tool, and the grab tool to shape every object to my desired specifications. And as you probably noticed, I only have two fries there it's because I felt like it would be easier to sculpt it first and then add the material and then copy and paste the fries everywhere and position them once they already have the material so I don't have to go back and add the material to each individual fry. Now that everything is sculpted I wanted to add the material so I slid that a new tab over and I made it into a shade editor tab and this way I can play with the material and also the environment texture. Okay, so now that everything has been sculpted, it's pretty much time to add the material. And we're going to be using node groups and the shade editor within the shade editor tab to create this glitter material. So the first thing that I did was remove the existing material and press new. And that should give us our principle BDSF. Now I want to go ahead and search for all the nodes that I need. So in order to search for the node, you can just press shift A on your keyboard and a search bar should come up and you can just look up the name of the node. So the first node I added was actually the material output node and I connected that um, to the mix shader. I then added the displacement node and I connected um, that to the material output node. If 
feel free to rearrange it as you see fit. I then added a glossy BSDF node and I connected that to the mix shader. Subsequently, I added a normal map and I went ahead and connected that to the glossy BDSF node and the displacement node. And before I even move on to adding any nodes, I'm just gonna adjust the settings. So in the mix shader, I changed the fact to 0.8. In the glossy BDSF, I changed the roughness to zero. In the displacement node, I changed the scale to 0 0.001. And so we're gonna go ahead and continue adding nodes. And the next node we're adding is the brightness and contrast node, contrast node and we're gonna connect that to the glossy BDSF. And we're gonna go ahead and change the brightness to 0.1 and the contrast to two. The next node we're adding is the Baroni texture. I really don't ever know how to say that one, but we're gonna go ahead and connect that node to the normal map. And once again, we're gonna adjust the settings. So for the scale and the Baroni texture, we're gonna change it to 256. Next node we're adding is a color ramp and we're going to connect that color ramp to the brightness and contrast node. And we're going to change it from linear to clockwise and from RGB to HSL. Change that zero to a one. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a wave texture node. And I'm going to connect that to the color ramp. I'm also going to be adding a mapping node. I will be connecting the mapping node to the wave texture node and the Veroni texture node. The very last node I'll be adding is going to be a texture coordinate node. I'll be connecting the object to the vector. I'm now adjusting the settings in the wave texture node. I'm bringing the scale up to 100, the distortion to 100, the detail to 100, the detail scale to 3. Now we're going to change the colors and the color ramp. One side just make it red and the other one make it like a pinkish color. It's just so it can have like a full wide spectrum, like a rainbow type of effect. Glitter material is basically done. I went ahead and switched over to render previews. This is what it initially looks like. Um, you're just gonna wanna go to the mapping node and change the scale. I did like negative eight, I believe, but you can play around with it. And it's gonna look super small like this. And there you go, you have your glitter effect. So right now you're probably wondering like, do I have to do this process over and over again for all of my objects if I want them all to be glitter? And the answer is no. If you just go to edit and then you go to preferences and then you go to add-ons and in the search bar, look for material library and check the box. And that way, this creates a little section within your materials tab in the properties panel where you can save your materials permanently and you can reuse them as many times as you want. That way you don't have to keep doing this long node process over and over again. So once you're in your materials library, I just went ahead and changed the name to glitter and I press add to library within the my materials um, scroll down menu. And now you're ready to select any object you want and apply the material to that object like I just did to the fries. Now you may notice when you try to change the color, like all the colors will change. A way to avoid this is by clicking on the number that appears next to the material and that adds like, that creates a new version of the material you already have existing that way. You can change the color freely without changing the color on anything, any of the other materials, basically, or the other objects that have that same material. So I went ahead and added the material to all of my objects and I changed the color and the color was kind of dull and I wanted it to be more vibrant. So 
in the mix shader node that we added earlier, you can change the fac setting and in order to make the color more vibrant, just lower the fac setting. And I also made the mapping smaller for the smaller objects because it looked better. And the next thing I did was just copy and paste the fries shaped objects all over um, the carton just to get obviously a more realistic look. Now that I added the material and I sculpted it, I just had to copy and paste it everywhere. I also slightly changed the colors, the color of, a, of the yellow for each fry to add like more dimension and like in real life, some fries may be a little burnt, some of them may be undercooked, so yeah. Now it's time to add an environment texture. I switched over to render previews tab. As you can see, it's grayed out. I switched over from object to world. And there should be these two nodes here. I went ahead and went to add environment texture and I connected those nodes. And this is what's really gonna make your glitter pop, like depending on what HDR I use, I use this one that I found on polyhaven.com and it really made it super extra glittery. So like, that's why I went with it. I just made that plane into a black color to use as my background. And then I pressed the camera icon and I adjusted my camera and I want it to be more of a 1350 by 1080 aspect ratio for Instagram. So that's, I went ahead and changed that and I adjusted my camera to my liking. And if you can't move your camera with your mouse, you just have to press N on your keyboard and you go to view, camera to view, and that way you can move around your camera with your mouse. Let me know if I, I say this in every tutorial, if things are sounding repetitive, let me know. And we're gonna take this glitter to a whole other level by compositing, but the first step is going to be to render this out. I'm rendering in Eevee. I know I usually render in cycles, but this glitter material looks a lot better in Eevee. So I just go to render, render image and render that out. Once that's rendered out, I go ahead and switch over from layout to compositing. And this is where I'm gonna set up my extra glare. I put use node and then I press shift A to search for the node and I look for the glare node and I connect that in between those two nodes. And then I look for the viewer node, which is gonna allow me to see my results without rendering it. I switch off the background cause I'm just gonna add another tab on the side and then I switch that tab to a image editor tab and I search for the viewer node. And this is how it looks like straight off the bat. Um, if you like it like this, you can keep it like this, but to adjust the amount of glare, you just adjust the fade and that makes it extra, extra sparkly. Like it makes it really look like it's shiny and I feel like it makes it look a lot better. So once you adjust your compositing settings, uh, this is pretty much it. You can re-render if you want, or you can just save the image right from the compositing tab. Pretty much concludes this tutorial. If you want an animation tutorial on this, let me know in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate if you left a comment, a like, if you subscribed, anything is appreciated.